Heidi ho and good day to you all. Welcome to the 5 Minute Film School. I am Rich, your humble yet vastly knowledgeable guru of all things guerrilla film, and I am here to impart upon all my faithful youths of America and YouTubians of the world the sum total of my experience and some shortcuts I've learned along the way. So let's just jump into this shit. Sorry for my long absence, but that's what happens when YouTube isn't your career and your life and job gets in the way of your audience. A thousand pardons, my faithful youths. So this is the episode about stealing scenes. And it may run a little longer than usual, but bear with me. My philosophy is, if it's out there and you need production value, then steal it. Now, I'm not advocating that you do this yourself, wink wink, but if you want a scene in a local chain department store, or a grocery store with a cast of thousands of unpaid extras, well, there's really only one way to go. Hermits Schmermits. Steal that shit! The key to shooting this way is to be inconspicuous. Blend in. Camouflage. Now luckily, we have the DSLR revolution still in full swing. You in no way want to stand out. For example, which of these guys do you think will get noticed by security at the local retailer? This guy? Or this DSLR overkill douchebag? Obvious, right? Keep a low profile and make sure if you have spastic OCD actors that they do not draw any attention to themselves by acting like horses asses when you're getting ready to roll. This has happened to me before. Tell them up front to maintain a low profile, i.e. shut the fuck up when you're not rolling. Now here's how I'd roll. I'd carry a stripped DSLR, no light, and wire my actors with two lavaliers, assuming you don't have three or four actors, at which point you'll need more channels or more zoom recorders. Place the recorder in your very small backpack. Use a pair of earbuds so you look like some schmuck just jamming to his tunes and let the magic happen, using what we in the industry call available light. Now I know that everyone here knows what available light is. In case you don't, it's the ambient light available in a room. Simple, right? Okay, next. Good thing to keep in mind is to always try and use retailers or restaurants or whatever locations that are chains because the stores or restaurants or bars will all look exactly the same. So just in case you're asked to leave one, you can always go to another and have it look almost identical. Another basic point is to avoid 10 page scenes because the more time you're in the location, the more time you're likely to get pinched. Shoot as many takes as you want, but I would at least do three, a master and two OTS close-ups to make your editing life a little easier. Lastly, where you can, leave the camera unmanned. This works well, especially in restaurant locations. It may extend the time you have in a particular location. If you set up a camera, no one will be the wiser. You could do a bar scene like this, because no one will know you're rolling. Okay, so before we get started, let's talk about law enforcement. No, not that kind of law enforcement. This kind of law enforcement. The real deal. Pro tip. How not to get arrested for trespassing and loitering. Number one, scout your locations beforehand. Know the store's security patterns, where cameras are, where security are heavy, and where they're light. Two, choose busy days. Staff will be too busy with work to notice you. And, as a bonus, you get more extras. Number three, the best way to avoid the cops is not to be there. If you're asked to leave the store or restaurant or whatever, leave quickly. Number four, be nice. Don't shout at staff or shout at mall cops. After all, they're just doing their jobs. Be nice, be nice, be nice. Even the mall cops. Avoid escalating the situation. Now, if you're almost done with what you're doing when intercepted by security, finish what you're doing quickly and leave. Remember, there are other stores, other locations you can use if you need to. Number five, if law enforcement arrive, be ultra respectful. Exclamation point on that point. Respect. Nothing disarms a cop quicker than deference to his or her authority. Yes, sir. No, sir. Move along. Don't shout about your constitutional rights. Don't antagonize. Leave quickly. If asked for ID, give it. Respect. I shot this scene for a series I did called Dude and Bro. I was intercepted by the police. Now we're on public property, which is a little bit different. Public property is patrolled directly by the police. So they're just driving around. If somebody calls them, they can come and intercept us. If you're in a private location, there's a little bit more time because security is going to be the first one to intercept you, and then they will call the police if you cause a problem or don't leave the store. But anyway, in this particular case, we were out in this location and we had fake guns, fake knives, fake blood, fake body armor, and the police drove up to us and we were like, oh shit, what are we going to do? And I put the guns down right away because cops these days are way trigger happy, so I didn't even want that issue to come up. 
When they asked us for our ideas, we gave it to them. We told them exactly what we were doing, and they were very nice about it. They said we'd have to leave because we didn't have a permit to shoot there. And so we packed up our stuff, and I finished the rest of the shoot in my backyard. Tragedy avoided. So we didn't end up on the nightly news in a cop shooting. Never antagonize. Diffuse the situation. Walk away. It's not worth going to jail for. Well, maybe it is worth going to jail for, but try and avoid it if possible. And the best way to avoid it is by not being an asshole. Okay, so now armed with the basics, let's do a scene at our local retailer, followed by one at our local restaurant. Here's a scene for an upcoming feature I'm doing called Andy and Chaz Destroy America, coming out in 2016. Shameless plug! Now before we really get going here, let me just start off by saying that oneers are your best friends in these cases. So here's our kit. Uh, I'll put a listing at the end of the video for all the different equipment you see here, but uh, this is everything and all we'll use, and I'm not even using that big bag. Here's Silvana and John Paul. We're going to be helping me today in this scene. Now this first scene I set up using a shopping cart. First of all to check the shopping cart and make sure it's not an unsteady one. Uh, I placed the camera where normally you would put a child and then I placed my hoodie over the top of it uh, so that nobody could see it. But uh, I found that wire shopping carts, as opposed to the plastic ones, uh, tend to do better as far as being stable, like this one. Can I have some money out of it? I got an idea. What's your idea? Let's not this Nobody business. saw us, right. bothered us, was interested in us. Uh, we did put some items in the cart to make it look like we were actually shopping. But uh, for the most part, we were not bothered at all. Now, settings-wise on the camera, I had the camera set to uh, automatic uh, for, uh, not for focus, but for uh, aperture, um, just in case there were lighting changes as we go, because I'm not able to actually see the screen while we're doing this. And it's important to tell your actors to maintain whatever distance they have between yourself and the cart and not to close that distance. Otherwise, they're going to end up cropping the tops of their heads off or something else or they'll just be plain out of focus I would close down the lens as well so that you have a little bit more depth of field uh, and uh, a little bit of latitude as far as the focus it might not be perfectly spot-on but it'll be close oh, enough to look good can as I have you some can money see on? here sure but I got an idea one of the things you may come up against is obstacles in the road because you have to move out of the way uh, I know I said earlier that sometimes it's better to to work when it's busy in the store if you're gonna do this particular shot with the shopping cart that may not be the case because then there's gonna be so many shoppers in the store that it's gonna make your job and life a lot more difficult now notice the advantage of the auto aperture and the auto white balance as well because the lighting changes here pretty drastically um, and actually this is a, a case in point of using the okay. available light in a space as as well as possible. I actually deliberately turn into the lighting aisle uh, so that this would happen and so you can see that it can really actually make it look much better. <laughs> Why don't we get something to eat and then we will rob somewhere else that is worth robbing. Okay. Yeah? So here's your more standard setup. As you can see on the left side, under that uh, text there you see, and it's my hoodie covering my camera which I placed on a stack of wood. It's just a three take shot, a one wide master and two OTS shots, and here we go. Yeah, but I got an idea. What? Go knock this place out. This place is small potatoes for us, and we have money right here. It's not about the money, it's about the thrill. Come on, how am I going to prove myself that we never get to do it? You guys don't believe I can do it. You have proven yourself, and I'm completely believing in our thieving abilities, but you know what? It's not worth the risk. Man, I'm starving. Can I have some money out of there? Sure. I got an idea, though. Hmm. Let's knock off this place. Yeah. What? Seamless, right? Now, obviously, the lighting could be better. Try to pick well-lit areas and use the disadvantage of no lighting to make your scene moodier. Always turn your disadvantages into advantages. For us, we have no choice, because without the money hose to wash away our problems, we only have our brains and balls and drive to accomplish the fucking mission. Now, we'll work on the restaurant scene. There's a few ways to do this. So this is the restaurant setup. Uh, I'm just leaving a camera on a table opposite this booth. Uh, I could have also been in the booth opposite the table and had the background of the cash register and everything. Uh, it turned out there were 10 cops in this one particular restaurant. Uh, here's a video of one of them. And uh, here we go. I need some carnitas. So can I get some food? <laughs> sure, but I got an idea that's better than that. 
Just give me some money and we'll get some food. What's your idea? Let's knock this place off. This place. So this is the across the street option. You'll need a longer lens for this. Also, depending on how far away you are, you may have to leave sound with your talent. Radio mics tend to have an effective range of about 50 to 100 feet, but the closer the receiver to the transmitter, the less likely there will be signal problems. You could also have a person standing by near the talent monitoring the sound. This I would recommend, otherwise you won't know what you have till post. The third would be the bar shot. Leave the camera low on the bar, maybe on a book or a bag or something, and let it run. Then change sides and do the reverse. Best way to do this is to have each character on a corner. You won't be able to get a master here as easily, but you will be able to get OTS shots if you have them on a corner and then change sides on each corner. So in the last four hours, you've been to five locations, run into 10 cops, been arrested zero times, and paid zero in location fees. Can I have some money out of there? I got an idea. What's your idea? Let's knock this place over. <laughs> you serious? Yeah. This place, this is small potatoes for us. Besides, uh, we have money right here. It's not about the money, it's about the thrill. How are you ever gonna see that I can do it if you don't let me do it? You have proven yourself, and I'm completely believing in our thieving abilities, but you know what? It's not worth the risk, okay? I'm trying to help you be smart about it. It's not all just guts. If we don't do this, I'll scream. Okay, scream then. Okay, all right. Were you really gonna scream? What is wrong with you? You're lucky you're cute, okay? Because it's like looking in a mirror, except, you know, if I was hot and had great tits. So, that's about it. To wrap it up, let's go through our points. Point one, if you can't afford it, steal it. Point two, Always do three takes and always use retailers that look exactly like other retailers so if you get kicked out, you can go to another one. Point three, always use a stripped down camera. Don't make yourself stand out. Fit in, look like just some schmo out there with a camera. You do not want to attract attention to yourself. Point four, keep your audio in a bag and carry it around with you. You don't want extra crew people. You don't want a bunch of people milling around. Maybe one other person to help you get these things accomplished. Restaurant scenes. Try and do as many takes as you can, but it might be a case for a one -er. If you're doing across the street stuff, make sure you have the sound relatively close to your actors. And lastly, if you're doing a bar scene, try to get the corner of the bar so you're able to see the actors' faces. Remember to subscribe to my channel, and if you have any questions, put them down below. If you have any comments or hate mail or anything you want to, you know, say, go ahead and say it. And if it's anything I can't answer, I will answer. And until next time, check out Andy and Chaz. Shameless plug.